There we go. All right. This meeting is being recorded. All right. So a little bit of uh, business from yesterday. Um, Harriet asked about the re-vapor pressure. And for Avgas, it is actually 5.5 to 7.0 PSI at exactly 100 pounds. I'm sorry, 100 degrees Fahrenheit, 100 degrees. So uh, that was the correct notation. 5.5 to 7 at 100 degrees. That will not be on the test. So, all right. Um, so I got that. And yeah, I was looking at that. I found it, uh, with... After reading a little more in that airframe book, it, uh, I saw that paragraph, and it, it kind of made sense and brought everything together. But thanks for uh, following up on that. Yeah, no problem. I... Don't know if I put it in Canvas. I'll pull it up. Where is it? This right here. I'm going to pull it up on this other. This book right here is amazing. Uh, it, it really explains things very well. Um, and so if you can find a copy of that, which I think it's on the internet. So I think I used that and put it. Visual. Put it in Canvas for you, since somebody else already stole it. I, I really like that showing. guy. Um, uh, Devin, it's showing your notes, not what you're looking at. Well, I know. It's yeah. notes. Now, I moved it over. It's this one. We don't right. see it. We still don't see, see it. now? It says no, spoof we don't fill. See it. What's that? We can't see it. You can't see that? Are you bringing from the camera or what? Well, no, because it's on my screen. So, oh. I see your mouse. I see the board. All you see is the note board? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. That sucks. Let me see. Share. Hang on. Let me see. Share. Screen two. I saw your cursor move in this note board, though. How about now? Oh, oh no. Ah, it's there it goes. Now we can see it. All right. So that also means you probably didn't see all my notes that I put up. No. Nope. Yep. All right. Let me see them now. I told you what it is. Okay. So this book. This book is really good. Um, it is written by Dale Crane, who's a great great author um, in aviation stuff. He explains stuff very well and uh, goes into a little bit of depth on some stuff, but uh, I believe you'll find that in Canvas. If not in, yeah, it is in Canvas. Canvas. And uh, if I remember correctly, it, there's also a pretty lengthy video that I put in there and I tell you uh, which sections to watch. So you don't have to watch the whole thing at, at, uh, all at once. So. I think I did a pretty good job with Canvas this time. And I think I forgot to start recording. So, no, we did record. All right, so we're recording, right? We are recording. All right, so that's where we are now. Where did I leave off? We left off talking about, and we're going to get into kind of a lot of depth on this today about mixtures. So, what we know so far is that as we go up into altitude, the air is gonna get thinner. And the carburetors, I'm gonna explain as we go, really doesn't know that. And so as a pilot, we have to compensate for what's going on. And in a lot of ways, the carburetors, some carburetors are gonna be self-compensating. Uh, but one of the things we're gonna try and learn about today is about what the mixture ratios are actually doing within the carburetor or I say carburetor, but when I say carburetor, I mean uh, any fuel delivery system. So uh, carburetor, fuel injection, that kind of thing. Am I coughing or sick? No, I just had something in my throat. Um, <coughs> from Phil. I don't know what you're saying, Phil. All right, so power ratios. We're gonna talk about power ratios. So that's point number three, if my pen works. There it goes, yay. Three, power ratios. Power. Power ratios. And I'm gonna go into this a little bit deeper, I think, than a lot of mechanics tend to get into. Uh, I think it's a good thing to know. Uh, there's a lot of weirdness that I was taught up front. It was nice when I finally figured it out. So I think um, Heath made this point actually yesterday. Stoichiometric, S-T-I-O-C-H-I-O-M-E-T-R-I-C. -I -I That's a word I should figure out how to abbreviate. Stoichiometric does not, does not. Okay, let's stop right there. And do we remember what stoichiometric means? 15 to 1. 
perfect fuel to air ratio? There you go, Mark. It is the perfect chemical fuel to air mixture. So chemically in a lab on a piece of paper, stoichiometric does not necessarily does not necessarily produce the highest power. The highest power. Hey, Kevin. Um, yeah? I, didn't, I don't know if um, I missed this yesterday, but as opposed to what? Chemically as opposed to um, what mixture? What type okay, of so when, I, when we talk about mixtures of fuel to air, not everything is equal. So um, if I have a certain amount of air coming through a carburetor and I add a certain amount of fuel, I could add too much or too little fuel. And depending on what I do is how well it's going to run. So I'm sure you've heard somebody saying, well, it's running really rich. Like uh, if a car, especially old cars with carburetors are running really rich, you could walk by and smell it. You could smell the gasoline coming out of the exhaust pipe. Right? That's not a that's not a good power. It's not going to produce a lot of power. It's going to be short on power. So the perfect mixture of air to fuel is called stoichiometric, and that is actually a ratio that is fifteen to one. Fifteen parts of air, thankfully, to one part fuel, because it would suck if it was the other way around. If it took fifteen parts of gas and one part of fuel, that would mean your car would get fifteen times less. Uh, gas mileage, worse gas mileage. So stoichiometric is defined as 15, 15 parts air to one part fuel. But that does not necessarily produce the highest power. It's just uh, what the scientists, so to speak, say. Now, why is that? If the scientists can look at it and say, well, if we count the molecules and that's what it takes to make uh, the perfect burn, why does it not work in an engine? Well, it doesn't because of a lot of reasons. One of them is the imperfect uh, imp imperfect way that fuel and air mixes in the cylinder. So this is due to imperfect, imperfect. I'm going to abbreviate FA. So that's fuel air. So I'll put that fuel air, fuel air. And I'm going to use FA a lot because I save time. Uh, do the imperfect fuel air, fuel air mixture. Is that imperfect because of percentage or for the uh, ambient? It's, actually, or? it's imperfect the way that it mixes in the cylinder. Oh, okay. So we have a very short period of time for all of the air and all of the molecule, the fuel, if you will, to find their little buddies inside that cylinder. So, you know, it's kind of like, well, I don't know. So the fuel is going to run in there. And then, uh, you know, then there's one air way over here and one fuel over here. And these two aren't connected. Like, wait, I got to get over there. But too late. Boom. It didn't work. So you don't get this really good mixture going on. So, so I'm going to have to look at my phone from time to actually at five o'clock. Uh, second year is going to start their lecture. And I told Phil I would keep an eye out if he had troubles because he didn't. Uh, they didn't get their lecture going yesterday. So, all right. The imperfect fuel air mixture in the cylinder, meaning it doesn't mix up well. Uh, two, reason number two, incomplete, incomplete scavenging of exhaust gases. Scavenging of exhaust gases. And what I mean by that is not all the exhaust gas gets out of the cylinder. Some of that exhaust gas is left in the cylinder and that's diluting the mixture in there. So that has to be accounted for. Um, so where does that leave us? So we have a couple reasons in there. Um, and so the most power, the most power is produced, is produced with a mix of what, Heath? I don't remember. Oh, you had it yesterday. I said, said twelve point eight to one. Twelve to one. Was it? Was it Heath yesterday? You said that. I think that was me. Oh, was that? All right. Twelve remember. to one. About twelve to one. Well, about twelve point eight to one is about that, and that is point zero eight three. If you want to look at decimals, and is that richer or leaner than stoichiometric? Leaner, richer, richer, richer. 
That's a tricky one. So you have to remember, 12 is less than 15. So we're getting closer and closer to one to one. And one to one is super rich. So that is richer, richer, richer than stoic. There, I'm just going to call it stoic, S T O I C. All right. So as a pilot or somebody operating an aircraft engine, we have to be uh, kind of thoughtful of this. It's one of the biggest things, especially for a power plant mechanic working on recip engines is the longevity of the exhaust valves. And so you're going to get a whole lot of discussion about this out in the field and people are going to ask you, what is your opinion? You're at rich of peak, lean of peak, and there's all this stuff. We're going we're gonna to get into that. So all those things are going to make more sense. But let me see, pull this up. I'll slide this over. Right. Do you see my PowerPoint chart there? Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So uh, best power mixture. This, what this chart is showing is, if we take a, a minute to look at it. Actually, there we go. Now I can write on it um laser pointer all right so we have three different horsepower settings down here we have the fuel air ratio so we have 0 0.06 is that going to be rich or lean uh, that'd be rich. Uh, rich. Uh, rich. Uh, rich. oh no, no. Rich. Rich, rich. okay so this right here is going to be about uh 10 to 1 and kind of goes like this. So one divided by 0 0.12 is eight. So this is eight. Six, that's lean, right? Eight to one. And so this over here is uh, one divided by uh, 0.06. So that would be 16. So down here we got this is 16. 16 so to one. So there you go. So we can see <laughs> over here, eight to one, this is going to be very rich. And this is going to be lean. So lean. All right. So looking at this and the different power settings. So what I want you to walk away from this going, and I'll write it in a minute, um, that, um, well, I'll show you. So, okay. So best power is right here. So this is a power curve and this is the uh, fuel curve. So if we're running really rich, we're going to have, this is our power down here. And as we lean, 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 and lean, and we get to a point right here, which is about, uh, let's say that's 0.077. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, yes. Yeah, that's about 12, 12 point, I just made that up. That's about 12.9 to one right here at this horsepower setting. So that's 400 horsepower. Now, as we go up in horsepower, um, for 400 horsepower at 2,900 RPM, as we change RPM and go up in horsepower, it's going to take a richer mixture to get the peak power, this is the power curve, so peak power. And then as we go up, now this is 450 to 500 horsepower at a higher uh, RPM setting, it's gonna be in a different spot. The reason for this goes back to something we talked about yesterday, and that is flame speed propagation. So different mixtures burn at different rates, and it says rich, Dan, okay. I'm sorry, I was looking over at, uh, uh, your notes. All right, we're good. All right, so they got back to the uh, the peak pressure point and where the peak pressure point happens. So uh, depending on the RPM is just depending on where you want that peak pressure point to happen. So that is my point for that one. So how do you, so it has uh, the graph and everything. So how do you make the actual mixture of it? Like, is it like a, a timing thing or like a, like a screw you turn into left or right to make make it rich or lean or oh, that's a really good question <laughs> i hadn't really thought to, to explain that one i'm glad you asked okay so in the cockpit i don't have a picture of a cockpit with me uh maybe i do i don't know let me see uh, discord uh let's see do i have a cockpit picture it's right next to the throttle no i do not so right next to the throttle is a red knob and you just pull the red knob out now the I wish I did have a picture. Let me see. We had one what at three ten, right? Stand by. So were those all the same engine on that test? 
Yeah, uh, I, that came out of a textbook, so I'm not even sure whose engine that was necessarily. Oh, great, now my computer wants to be really slow. Oh, we'll just let that go. Uh, there we go. No, picked up the wrong one. I was gonna try and find a picture of a cockpit. All right, while that's coming up, I will get back to that. So we're, I'll do my notes right here. So uh, we're talking about best power mix. Best. Oops. Okay. Best power mix. Best power mixture. Best power mix. All right. So let's define that. What is the best power mixture? Because in in this aviation speak, we're going to talk about different mixtures. So right now we're talking about the best power mix, and that is a mixture that will produce the maximum power, which makes sense, right? So a mixture that will produce, produce the maximum power. Maximum power. Um, that is, um, mm -hmm. here, we'll define it, most miles per hour for a given power setting, which is to say that if I'm a pilot and I want to get someplace quickly, then I'm going to adjust my engine to give me the maximum power so I get there the fastest. There we go. All right, so there's my uh, throttle. The throttle is black. Next to the throttle is the blue knob. The blue knob is the propeller knob. And we're gonna be talking about that later in the semester, this class, which uh, will adjust the RPM. So it gets a little complicated. If you have a fixed pitch propeller and you don't have the blue knob, then what you have, this knob controls your RPM throughout the entire range. But when you have a constant speed propeller, when the propeller knob is pushed all the way in like this, it's putting the propeller in the lowest possible pitch or the highest RPM. And then this knob will adjust the RPM. Now in flight, I can set this knob at a certain spot and then start pulling the propeller out and it's gonna decrease my RPM, and then this will set the RPM, and then this knob becomes the manifold pressure knob, which seems a little confusing, but you'll get used to that. So, but for right now, we're just gonna work with the airplane, like my little 150, that only has a black knob and a red knob. So the black knob is my throttle, forward to go fast, pull back to go slow. And this knob right here is called the mixture control, um, also called the idle cutoff. And the reason why it's called that is all the way in is full rich. As I pull it back a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, it is going to lean out the carburetor. Uh, there's a little valve in there on, on one type that'll actually start closing off a little valve and limiting how much fuel goes through the main fuel jet. So as I pull it out, it is going to lean out the carburetor. Uh, when I pull it out far enough, it's called idle cutoff. And I don't know why they call it idle cutoff because it will shut the engine down no matter what speed it's at. So you pull it out far enough, it just shuts down the engine. Um, by the way, these two right here are called veneer knobs, the blue and the red. And the reason why is because you can actually rotate it for very fine adjustments or push this little button in. It's got a lock on it. Push the button in and you can slide it in and out manually. Otherwise, you can just turn it real slow. And that gives you fine adjustment. This one does not have the fine adjustment. So that's the mixture control. So you just pull out and go lean. All right, so best power mixture is like giving me the most miles per hour. Well, that may sound a little weird if you're trying to uh, equate that to an automobile. And the reason why is because if we want to go faster in a car, we just give it more throttle. Well, you have to think about an aircraft. I'm going to set the throttle at a position if I'm in a cruise, say about 75% power. 
And that's just it. It's 75% power and I want to go fast. And how can I go faster without changing my power settings? Well, the way I go faster without changing my power settings, meaning the throttle or the propeller. Would your, would your power setting be considered like your RPM? It is. So without changing, well, without changing the black knob or the blue knob, how can I go faster? More fuel. More reach. More yeah. reach. Yeah. To make sure. Okay. Sure. So I, um, so, sorry, I'm doing a couple things at once here. Um, yes. So I need to get more horsepower. If I get more horsepower, I'm going to go faster. Um, like in my airplane, we can make it simple, a 150. So I, I don't have the prop knob. So I get up, get up to altitude and I want to get somewhere quick. Say I'm at 5,000 feet or even 6,000 feet. Or, or so I start pulling back on my mixture, pull a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. I keep pulling it out. You have to go really slow and I'm going to watch. And at some point I'm going to see my RPM start to rise and I'm going to see my airspeed start to rise. And as I keep pulling it out, I'm going to see it rise, rise, rise. And I'm going to start seeing it go the other way. So what happened is I'm on the rich side of best power. And I, and let me pull this back up. Yeah, once you get past a certain point, you lose your power because it's too rich. Yeah, all right. So I'm looking back at this. The so, only thing that's confusing is when you say 75% power, but then you, you change the, the carb to give you more power, you know? I know. Okay. So let me try and unconfuse you with that. So if I look at the pilot operating handbook for a Cessna 150, and it's going to tell me that I should cruise at, let's say it tells me to cruise at 75% power or less. And I say, okay, I'm going to cruise at 75% power. Then it's going to give me a chart that's going to tell me what 75% power is. It is not 75% of redline. And it is a function of altitude. I would pull one up, but it'll probably take me too long. I'm wasting too much time to pull it up right now. But uh, so I look at it and it says, okay, so at sea level, 75% power is, I'm going to make up a number. Uh, my red line is say uh, 20, uh, what, what is it, Steve? 2750? It should be 2700. Okay, so 2700. So red line's 2700. And, it, and so it says 75% uh, power. I'm just going to make it up. Is that... Um, 2,500 RPM. So let me just pull it up. It can take me too long. How hard can it be? Let me see. It's right here. And um, see this manual. LMNO. Oh, thought I'd have one right here. There. Here's my Cessna 150 manual. Let's see. Let's see how accurate I was because in mine it's 2700. Let's see. Uh, it should be the same. The thing is, can I find it quickly though? Without wasting a bunch of time. I might be able to pull it up on my phone because I have the 150 service manual on my phone. Well, I'll look it up. So you can go. You know, got it. Okay. So here we are 75% uh, power. And it tells me at sea level that my RPM is 25, 25. So if in fact I want to fly around at sea level, which I don't, um, my RPM is uh, 25 25 is going to give me 75% uh, power. Then I climb up to 5,000 feet and my RPM now goes to 2650, gives me 75% power. Now, the funny thing about this, I'll admit it, this is something that I was not taught when I was flying. In fact, uh, the person who taught me to fly was like, well, you know, you should fly pretty much around, they wanted me to fly his airplane right around 2350 all the time. So no matter how high you went. So now look at the, it goes to 7,000 feet, it says full throttle. And then you gotta ask yourself, well, wait a minute. The RPM is definitely going up, right? You can see 25, 25, 2650, and then uh, I think it's 2700. Um, why is that still 75% power? Because of the air. There you go, because the air is getting so much thinner that, um, that we're losing a lot of power. So if you remember from last class, the uh, formula for power was Planck. And one of those yeah. things was, so we had pressure, the you know length of the stroke, the number of cylinders, but in there was RPM. 
So as the pressure goes down, because the mean effect of pressure is going to go down as we climb inside of the engine, just because the altitude is thinning. Uh, so to maintain the same power, we have to increase one of the plank numbers. And the only thing left is RPM. So we increase the RPM. So on my manual, by the way, it says 100 at 2750. Just 100 what at 2750? Uh, which I don't think is it right. It says 100% power at 2750. That doesn't seem right, but that's what it says. Okay. So uh, I didn't quite get you on that. All right. So let me see. So hang on, Phil, and I'll, I'll answer that question. So, um, all right. So uh, what I, I guess my point to this was as we go up in altitude, we're also increasing our RPM to attempt to maintain the same power. But in addition to that, if I did not adjust my mixture setting at all, the red knob, it, the aircraft is going to get richer and richer and richer and richer. And aside from the fact that it's just going to be wasting fuel and it could be fouling out spark plugs, I am going to continue to lose power as I go up in altitude. So I have to fix that. Now, cars do it automatically with the computer don't have that in the aircraft. So, um, so we have to, so if we didn't touch the knob, the red knob, as we go up, these, these actual numbers right here, this wouldn't even be 75% power. Uh, you're going to start losing power. This assumes that you have the correct mixture. And right here, to achieve the lean mixture, I think it's going to explain it all in there. Yeah, confusing be done most efficiently at higher altitude because the lower engine density and lower air speed state power. We'll get into that. All right. So as we go up in altitude, <laughs> we have to lean or we're going to be losing power. So I've got to do two things. One, I got to increase my throttle because <clears> of the, <throat> the less air that is available to the engine. And two, I have to lean it because of less air available to the amount of fuel that's being dumped in the carburetor. Because most carburetors are rather stupid. They don't measure the density of air. They measure the volume. And the volume does not change as we go up, but the density absolutely does. So, all right. Okay. I don't know what I was point I was trying to make at this point. Uh, oh, okay. So I know most miles. Okay, miles. So I want to go faster. So the question was, how do I go faster? Well, I I'm up at altitude. I've got my my RPM set where it's supposed to, but I want to go faster. I'm going to pull that mixture knob out until my airspeed and my RPM peak out. And that's going to be this chart here. So I pull the mixture. So uh, we're gonna be running pretty rich. So we're gonna be over here on the rich end just because it got rich because I went up. Mm. So I'm gonna pull, pull the red knob, pull the red knob, pull the red knob, pull the red knob. Right about here, boy, I can hear and I can see that RPM found a peak and the airspeed went up a little bit. I'm gonna keep pulling, keep pulling. <laughs> And the airspeed's going to start dropping, and my RPM's going to drop. And if I keep pulling, eventually the, air, the RPM goes to zero, and uh, you have to push it back in because the engine quit. So, so engine Kevin. Quit. So push it back in, find the peak. There we go. That is my best power mix and or the fastest. All right, so that's most of my um, – so let me see. Kevin. Yeah. So we adjust that as an A and P, but ultimately the pilot is the one that is basically playing with it, right? Yes, that red knob is for the pilot. Okay. There are two adjustments that you're allowed to make on a carburetor. And I will have you adjust those to death in the class. When I'm done with you, if nothing else, you know which two. Idle speed, idle mix. You can adjust the idle speed, you can adjust the idle mixture. Pretty much it. Everything else is set. So let's see, that's most miles per hour and two. I have two, two right here. So note, note this is from the chart. Um, so you're getting more. Wait, uh, Phil, so are you getting more power the leaner it is or vice versa? Is it better, richer? Kind of don't understand. Okay, it's not that it's better or worse, richer or leaner. You're trying to find this spot, which is about 12 to 1, that gives you the best power. So as you go up in altitude, you must lean it out to get the 12 to 1. Because if we think about it, oh. if we started on the ground and the carburetor was perfect, and the carburetor was 12 to 1 as we take off, now we start 
taking off, it's going to go, um, going to get richer. So it's going to go, um, well, it'd be lower lumber. So it's going to go uh, 12, it's going to go 11, 10, 9, 8, 7 to 1, 6 to 1. And now it's not even going to run if we got high enough. So you want to keep pulling it back to keep it at 12 to 1. So on a constant speed prop, would you want the highest manifold pressure? Uh, no, you don't want just the highest manifold pressure. It's a combination of manifold pressure and propeller RPM. So it's a whole different chart. Uh, okay. Old school way of doing it, they used to call it squared. And so they would say, well, if you, you would either, you would go 2,300 RPMs and then 23 inches, or you go 2,400 RPM and 24 inches, uh, you see 2,500 RPM or 25 inches. That, but that's actually a very simplistic old school way of doing it. So I say go by the chart in the, in the manual. So note, note uh, that, that this mixture, that this mixture, is different is different at different power settings at different power settings which is to say I can't say that it's 12 to 1 it's not as we saw in in the PowerPoint which one is it I don't want that one this one as we saw in this one that where it happened to be, like this one is at 0.077, this one is 0.082, this one is way over here at 0.91 or something, and it depends upon how much power and how much RPM you're using. Um, so for the stoichiometric, like perfect, you know, burning mixture, is that like at a certain level, like sea level? Would that be like, that's how they did it on paper or does that matter? Paper. Stoichiometric is purely a paper thing. Okay. You're, you're literally counting how many molecules of oxygen and literally counting how many molecules of, of fuel you have and you're matching them up with a piece of paper and a pen. You're going, wow, look at that. It takes 15 parts of air to one part of fuel to make the perfect mixture. All right. All right. So for best power mixture and... And I know you got that written down because I was long-winded there. All right, so best power mixture. Um, so the procedure is lean. So we're flying along. We lean until, until RPM, assuming you don't have a constant speed prop, and airspeed, airspeed peak. Wherever that peak spot is, there you go. Um, at the risk of doing this, this is about... 100 degrees ROP. Now I'm going to use ROP and LOP a lot. So that stands for rich of peak. Now I'm going to take a minute to explain rich of peak. So inside of the aircraft, a lot of them, um, and I, I put one in my aircraft, we have, let me see, I should have a picture here. find it yep there we go is that rich of peak or rich or peak rich of rich of peak thank you okay so when i'm talking or anybody in aviation talks about rich of peak what we're talking about is exhaust gas temperature or egt and we can see right up here exhaust gas temperature egt and this is probably the easiest gauge to look at and i love this um because this was the original first EGT gauges to come out on the market. And all they did is they put a little asterisk right there. And you can look at that and it says 25 degrees for division. So how much is it at the asterisk? 100. 25? 100%. Yeah, 25 times four, right? You have no idea. Nope. You don't know. The small division or the big division? Oh, Doesn't mean. matter. Oh, so it's uh, 25 degrees per small division. All right. Oh. So the point is, there are no numbers assigned to that. Look at the next one. There are no numbers assigned to it. Look at this one. There are no numbers. This is the one I have on my plane. It has numbers. We're back over here. We have numbers. So all of these up here, 
they actually have no numbers. And the reason why is because it's not relevant. Uh, it, all you're looking for is, so I wrote down rich of peak and, and there's the opposite as lean of peak. And then of course in the middle is peak. And what we're talking about, rich of peak, lean of peak, um, or peak is peak EGT. In other words, just like I told you a minute ago that you're going to pull the mixture back until you saw a peak of RPM and a peak of uh, uh, airspeed. Mm -hmm. When we talk about rich of or lean of peak, we're talking about this gauge right here, the exhaust gas temperature. So I'm flying along and my EGT gauge, we'll see it's, we'll say it's right about here where this yellow thing is. Um, actually, it'd be over here. So before the yellow and I start, and I'm flying along, I'm at altitude and I pull it out. As I pull it out, the exhaust is going to get hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter. And eventually it's going to reach some sort of peak. And as I keep pulling it out, it's going to start getting cooler and cooler and cooler. All right. So probably, well, not probably this yellow line here is something you would set up. See a little screwdriver there runs it. Yeah. I would set that up to be my peak. And so I would know where my peak EGT is. And so if I wanted to run a hundred degrees rich of peak, then I would, um, I would pull this out until I got peak and then keep pulling it until I got, um, I'm sorry, rich of peak would be, I would pull it out and pull it out until it was a uh, hundred degrees away. So I'd be 25, maybe 25, uh, 50, 75. So right here. So I would start pulling it out then it would climb until I got right here. And I would say, okay, that's hundred degrees rich of peak. If I kept pulling it and it went to here, I would say it is peak. Okay. But now if I kept pulling it, it goes the other way. Now I'm on the lean side of peak. So that's lean of peak. You guys follow that one? Yep. Okay. So when I say rich of peak, lean of peak, it's always going to reference exhaust gas temperature. And some people joke around that exhaust gas temperature, well, we'll get into what they say and stuff like that. But anyway, these are all the EGT gauges. Now, I, this is the one I put in my aircraft and um, mine is split where one side I have cylinder head temp and the other side I have exhaust gas temp. And it actually gives me numbers, which are actually irrelevant because the number that is showing here is strictly a function of how close I put the probe to the exhaust. Uh, exhaust valve. So I can't look at it and go, wow, you know, you know, if Steve had one of these in his aircraft and he was flying mine and go, well, Kevin, how come your exhaust gas temperature says 1365 and mine always says 1450? I would say, well, that's because mine is probably closer to the exhaust valve than yours. The point is not the number. The point is where it is in reference to the peak. And that's all. All right, so that's so that's 100 degrees, rich of peak. Uh, all right, let me see. Then we have lean best power. Okay, so we have we talked about best power. Now we're going to talk about lean best power. And let me see. I'll, I'll just do this right here. And D rich best power. And I'm gonna pull a chart up for that one. If rich, if best power, so this one's really simple actually, and they just make it really complicated. If best power is right here, then rich best power is simply how rich can I go and get pretty much the same power and lean best power is pretty much how lean can I go to get pretty much the same power. So it's just the range between that. And so you can see it's a pretty, pretty narrow range. And so here's rich best power, lean best power. It's just a little richer than best power. And that's just a little leaner than best power. I got stuff all over my desk. I can't find it. All right, so rich best, lean best power. We'll go there, lean best power, uh, the leanest mixture. So the leanest mixture uh, that will still produce maximum power. Still produce 
max power. Max power. And then rich best power is the same thing. It's just the richest mixture that will still produce max power. Would one of those be hotter than the other? Yep. Uh, I just threw out, yep. Yes, it would, they wouldn't be equal. They wouldn't necessarily be equal. We're going to get into that just a little bit here. Okay, okay so that, that, that's best power. So what have I got about another two minutes about it? We can do that. We'll make this our last point. So best economy. So in addition to best power, the other side of that is best economy. So best power is I want to get there as fast as I can. I want the most power my engine produces. And the opposite end of that is I want to get there, but I want to use as little fuel as possible to get there. Now, the irony of this is if you know pilots, most of them will spend ungodly amounts of money to make their plane go as fast as possible and then do everything they can to save a drop of fuel. <coughs> so, I don't know. Don't get me started. All right, produces produces the greatest the greatest amount of power amount of power in relation to the fuel burned in in other words it's saying the best best miles per gallon All right, and that is going to bring us right up to specific fuel consumption, which is where we'll start right after the break. So I will see you guys in a couple minutes. Okay.